Hi, this is Brenda. My channel is Handwork Maniac. My friend Colleen asked if I would show how I load my lock scroll scroll rods. These are lock scroll scroll rods from artisandesign.com. They're the kind that has a groove right here. You can see this groove and this little piece of wood that fits into it. That's what holds the fabric to it. There's lots of different kinds of scroll rods. You can get the kind that has a piece of webbing stapled to it, and then you actually sew your fabric to the webbing, hand sew it. There's the kind that has Velcro attached to it, and then you have to attach Velcro to the top of your fabric, and that's what attaches to it. There's a split rail kind where this rod actually splits in half almost all the way down, and you can feed your fabric in there and then roll it up. Um, roll a frame has one where the split rod comes all the way apart and it has tacks in it and so you lay your fabric on the tacks and then put the two halves back together again. So there's lots of different styles of scroll rods and how they attach the fabric to the top and bottom of the rod. This kind, the lock scroll system from Artisan Design, is the kind with this groove and these little pieces of wood that hold the fabric in. So Colleen asked if I would show how I load my fabric into one of these. The first thing you're going to want to do is either, normally you would not have something stitched on here already. You would have a blank piece of fabric. So whether if you're starting in the middle, you need to mark your middle before you put the fabric on. Or if you're doing a coming in from the corner, use a corner gauge and mark whether you're coming in, <clears throat> how far you're coming in. Three inches. Two or three inches is a common amount. That depends on how big you've cut your fabric. You have to know how big your fabric is to know where your top corner is going to be. For this type of scroll rod, because it has to wrap all the way around once to hold this piece of wood in, you can make it work with a three inch, three inches border here at the top, but it works. It's much easier if you have a four inch border at the top. And you'll see that in a minute when I do this. I've marked this as three inches because that's a very common amount and I've put a safety pin right here so you can see where that is. I would highly suggest if you have room on the fabric to give yourself four inches at the top and the bottom to roll over this rod. If your fabric has been cut too short or it's expensive and you don't want to buy that big of a piece, you can always just sew any kind of scrap fabric that's not stretchy to the top of your fabric like I have done on this piece. That was why this piece got added to here because I needed it to roll around the top. And these were kit pieces that came pre-cut so they weren't big enough. So even if you don't have a sewing machine, you can just hand sew an extra piece of fabric up here to give you a little bit of extra room. <clears throat> I have made it work with three inches, but you're gonna be stitching right up next to this rod when you get started right there at the top. So mark your, where you're going to start your sewing, your stitching. Put your frame together, the two sidebars and the two scroll rods. Put the knobs on because lock scroll system has this nice little handle on the scroll rod to help you tighten it. Put those so that they are opposite to each other. Don't put them so that they're on the same side. The directions recommend that you make sure they're opposite to each other when you put this together. So put it together, but leave the knobs loose. <sighs> Which I did not do with this one first. Hang on. Because we're going to be rolling those scroll rods, so they need to be loose. Okay, so rotate at this top one so that the groove is on the top. Take your fabric. Oh, that's the other thing. Because these lock scroll scroll rods have this nice little handle right here for you to tighten it, these scroll rods are actually 18 inches long. From the sidebar to the sidebar is 18 inches. And when you purchase this on the Artisan Design website, this is an 18 inch set of scroll rods. But right on the website, right next to where you're clicking purchase, where it has the description, it will remind you that the fabric area on this scroll rod is two inches less. 
this groove that your fabric has to feed through because of this handle on this side and this on this side and the groove ends right here, the groove is only 16 inches. So even though these are 18 inch scroll rods, you're not going to be able to put anything on here that is wider than 16 inches. That's your maximum width of fabric you can put in here. So make sure you know that if you're ordering scroll rods for a specific project, make sure you order them big enough. If they're too big, that's okay. It makes it heavier and bulkier than it needs to be, a little more awkward, but you can do that. It just means that if you're gonna use the Velcro side straps that I'll show you in a minute, they would need to be long enough to make it to however far it is into the fabric. If you're not using those, then it doesn't matter if you have a big gap between your fabric and your sidebars. All right, so center your fabric in that groove. Make sure it's kind of centered in the groove. Feed it underneath. Bring it over the top. Make sure it's centered in the groove. And then put this little piece of wood in. And push it down in. Now your piece of fabric that's sticking up right here is not even. I know this isn't a great camera angle, but trust me, it's not. So you can kind of hold the stick in, but pull on the fabric, either from the back to pull it back down and make it shorter. Or if you pull it too much and then it's too short, you can pull it back up a little bit. This part's a little fiddly, but I recommend that you take the time to make sure it's straight with the grain. If the top of your fabric was cut crooked, you need to make this straight to the grain of the fabric, not to the top. But if it was cut straight with the grain, then you can just use the top as your guide. So get it in there till it's even. Hold, you hold the stick in, but kind of smooth it back across to the and roll it towards you until that piece of wood gets caught under there. That's the only thing holding that little piece of wood in is the friction of this, the pressure of this roll of fabric. Now you'll see that my safety pin that I marked to start this is right up next to that roll. It will come down a minute when we tighten it up, but this has to roll far enough to catch that piece of wood. And then I tighten up just these top knobs. Then the reason, oh, and it fell out. Look at that. I did not roll it far enough. going to roll it just a little bit further for now. The reason you roll the fabric underneath the rod is because this right here will get, will if you brush against something dusty, it's going to get dirt on it, it gets touched a lot, it gets some wear and tear. You always want this to be the back of your fabric, not the front of your fabric. Okay, and then to put the bottom in, rotate your bottom one so the groove's up. Do the same thing, bring it underneath and then over the top. Center it in your groove. Put your little piece of wood in. Make it as straight as you can so that it will roll <laughs> straight. And same thing. And this one, because I know I'm going to start stitching at the top, I'm going to roll all the excess fabric onto the bottom and I'm going to try and keep this tight as I roll it. It's not going to be, it's going to be loose, but do your best to kind of roll it tightly. This was a really long skinny piece, that's why it has so much extra fabric at the bottom. And I would pull that as tight as I can get it. My top knobs are not really tight, so it's trying to unroll this a little bit. Which is okay, because I want to come it down just far enough to see that starting safety pin right there. 
and I'll tighten them up again because I don't want it to come any further or that top stick's going to come out. Then I'll pull this tight again on the bottom until it's really tight. Hold the tightening knob with your one hand and screw in the knob that is opposite it first. And then you can switch hands and tighten this one. Make sure these are tight one more time. Okay, you can see that my safety pin to mark my start is right there. So I could stitch right up next to this scroll rod if I needed to. It's just barely round, far enough to hold that piece of wood in. In fact, I could probably unroll it just a tiny bit more and that piece of wood would stay in so that I could stitch with a three inch margin. But you can see how it would be a little easier if you had a four inch margin at the top because then you'd have a little more space here to work with. But you can make it work with a three inch if you roll that down. <laughs> Of course I'll do that and then this will loosen up a little bit for some reason and that stick will pop out on me occasionally as I'm trying. I try and get that top done as quickly as possible so that I can roll it just a little bit further. These, I like my fabric really tight so I will tighten up this, the top and the bottom every time I work on it and make sure it's really tight. You should probably loosen it when you're not working on it a little bit, give it a little bit of slack so you don't warp these bars. This is called a scroll rod side strap. If you go to Etsy and do a search for scroll rod side strap, there's usually a couple of sellers who make these and sell them. It's just a suspender clip that you can buy at Joann's. Comes apart like this. Hooked to some webbing with Velcro on it. The loop is on this side, the hook is right here, this section. You hook it to your fabric. I like to put it upside down. And you feed this over the sidebar, back through the... Let's see if I can get where you can see it. Back through the suspender clip. And then you, on the back, I'm just going to pull it tight and then lay it down on the Velcro so that it holds it tight. You would buy, it comes in sets of two usually. I always have four. I'll have one here, one here matching it opposite, one here, and one here matching it opposite. Because I'm going to know this is going to be on my Elan lap frame or my floor frame I know that my clamp has to fit right here so I try and make sure that they're up high enough top and bottom to not interfere with that clamp. Now you can see that this velcro strap is not very long. If this gap was any bigger this velcro strap would have a hard time making it clear to the edge. I have made some homemade ones I just went to Joann's and bought some suspender clips and then I took some Velcro, a strip of the loop side, a strip of the hook side, and I sewed them together with my sewing machine. You could sew it by hand. They need to be so that this one is upside down and this one is right side up. You'll figure that out once you try and do it. <laughs> and that gave me a much longer strip. So I could hook this on. Then I wrap the, which side is this? The loop side around a couple times. And then I just pull the other one up and over and hook it. It's not as nice. I've got loops sticking out everywhere. I try and get them out of my way, but it works. If I have a bigger gap, then this will make it. And then I would put two more on the other side and that makes it tight left to right. I really like that that way. And I think, I hope, that is everything. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Thank you.